church. Give God some glory this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Welcome to Sunday service. We're so glad to be in the house with you today. Come on, let's worship together. Holy water on my skin 
cleansing flood, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, because that's what my father does. No failure won't define me, because that's what my father does. not the end game the journey's where you are you never wanted perfect you just wanted my heart if the story isn't over if the story isn't good failures never find oh when the father's in the room come on failures never find oh when the father's in the room Ooh. together with us. Prodigals come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move, where the Father's in the road. Prison doors fling wide, the dead come to life. On the moon, where the Father said, Come on, somebody testify. The miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through. Where the Father is in the room, Jericho walls, Jericho walls are quaking. Strongholds now are shaking. shame at the door cause it ain't welcome anymore ooh you're in the Father's house
never been a moment that you were forgotten and you are not hopeless though you have been broken your innocence stolen I hear you whisper underneath your breath I hear your SOS your SOS hear the Lord say I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night is true I will rescue you there is no distance that cannot be covered over and over and you're not defenseless no cause I'll be your shelter
stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight is true. wonder for about 10 or 15 seconds if this song has ministered to anyone today maybe you look back over your life and you say unless God would have rescued me who knows where I would be today or maybe the sickness had you thinking there was no hope hey we're receiving reports folks and we're going to we'll, when we get more detail we're going to tell you but this is something to praise God for this church has a person that's coming out of death's door because of COVID, the very first ever in this area, coming back for a recovery. Why? Because the power of prayer went forth. God is greater than COVID. How many times do we have to say it? God is greater than a virus. He's greater. Whew. Now, I want you to keep that same energy and joy I know it's a holiday weekend. You've got uh, plans for grills and cookouts and family and all kinds of wonderful things. But the next few moments, can you put your entire focus on your gratefulness to where Jesus has brought you from? Would you do that for about 15 seconds? Thank you, Father. You rescued me, God. You heard my SOS. You're my rescue, oh God. Oh, I bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, you rescued me. Love lifted me. Your blood covered me. Your grace fell me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. With a grateful heart, I worship you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you. Well, would you simply turn and just wave at someone and greet them today? Tell them you love them with the love of the Lord today. Good to see you this morning. Hey, Lighthouse, we've got several folks that are back with us today that the past six and seven weeks, a sickness and a virus has had them. Why don't we give the Lord a hand for those that are back with us? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. What a wonderful day to worship God. This is the day of the miraculous. Your expectation is what breeds a miracle. I pray that you have high expectation today on what God will do. Say, Wednesday night kicked off our September to remember and our revival service, Brother Emil Shane did an absolute marvelous job presenting the Word of God to us. What a wonderful spirit was in this place. This coming Wednesday, make efforts, even if you get off of work a little late, come on in your work clothes. The power of God was so strong Wednesday evening. Those of you that were here, you know His Spirit came in this place like a mighty flood, and it touched many, many needs. Let me say thank you for those that have given. We've had probably about 30 families that have given online, that have brought supplies uh, to our hurricane relief trailer. Did everybody see that trailer out there? Listen, y'all, we've probably got about 2,000 pounds of waters on that trailer. And so by about 5 this evening, if you want to bring materials and supplies, please do so. We still need baby diapers. You can bring formula. Uh, we need cleaning supplies. You can bring rags, uh, paper towels, toilet paper, bleach, uh, any type of cleaning supply. All that is so welcome. For those of you that gave online, those of you that will, the church has sponsored and put up front uh, the resources 
uh, to purchase what we've purchased. And uh, we're going to be able, folks, with your donations and what has been promised to come in. There's a church in East Texas, Port Arthur, Texas. We're going to, I think we've either got five or six on the list that we're going to be able to help and minister to. But where they are right in Hurricane Alley, the insurance for them, this church had no insurance. They've lost their roof, but they are in great need to be able to have service and to work. They were in great need of a generator. And we had a donation of $500, and we were able to buy that church a generator and 10 extension cords. Give yourself a hand for that. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, so please, you can still give online. Uh, for this need, even while we're there, I can purchase Home Depot gift cards. So there is a tab that is on our website that says Hurricane Relief. Maybe you want to give today on your envelope, just write Hurricane Relief. But how honored and proud I am to serve this great church that has a heart of servanthood. And that trailer being filled is a symbol I said in our first steps class today, a sign of maturity is when you move from needing to be served to wanting to serve. That's a sign of spiritual maturity. And this church, you're very mature in the Lord and thank you for your giving. Amen. Well, I'm gonna ask our ushers to come. We're gonna be collecting our Sunday tithes and offering. Today is Missionary Sunday. So if you have support for that, please make sure you mark it on your envelope. In the month of October, we're going to be presenting our missionary needs. We're going to be taking missionary commitments for the year. So we want you to be praying about what you will give and sow into the mission field. Let me say this. Every Wednesday night, the offering on Wednesday evening will go for the support of this revival. At the end of every Sunday service, we're going to give you an opportunity to sow into the ministry if it has blessed you on that Sunday and we know that it will. So be prepared for that. Would you stand today? Ushers, come please. We're gonna ask you to march today. They're gonna help you uh, with that by releasing you. Make sure you stay about an arm's length, if you would please, uh, from those that uh, are close to you in that row. Uh, if you would do that, that would be appreciative. All right. Let's say our tithing covenant prayer. They're going to put that up on the screen. Let's say it together. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. Here we go. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, Debts demolished, royalties received. My whole family is saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name, amen. Give him a hand for that, hallelujah. God bless you, you give as your ushers direct you.
Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for your giving. The Lord richly blesses you. I know he will. The Lord loves what type of giver? Cheerful. Smile real big. Amen. He loves a cheerful giver. Uh, our trio is going to come in just a moment, our mixed trio, and bless us with a worship song. The word of God will be coming. Our heart will be open for that. But I want you to know that the last Sunday of this month, September the 27th is still our friends and family Sunday. We have heard precious, precious saints that has family and friends coming with them. We have ordered uh, about 300 or so box lunches. And so we're going to have a very acceptable way, uh, cautious way of doing this that you'll feel comfortable. You will not have to touch. There will be no touching of utensils. We have barbecue and chicken, the two main meets at any Pentecostal church will be here on that Sunday. All right. And, uh, and we believe in baptism, so you'll have plenty of barbecue sauce to baptize uh, that barbecue. Okay. Uh, but we're going to have those in a box lunch, and you'll be coming through, being able to pick those up, no handling. And uh, we're going to have a, a large tent on the ball field uh, that you can come and fellowship. And we're asking those with physical needs or disabilities and our elder uh, saints, uh, you are very welcome to be at the gym. We'll have two locations. We'll have social distancing. Bring your friend. Bring your family. We're going to have a wonderful time on the 27th. Are you in love with Jesus today? Give the Lord a hand as our trio comes today. place where dreams were shattered and you felt you lost the race where the only thing that's left is sorrow and pain you wondered if you mattered or did anyone see you at all take him to the place Watch dead things live again Where one touch of His grace And it's all washed away He's calling out your name Doesn't matter where you've been Or whatever you have faced Don't be afraid Just take Him to the place There's a place where hope is given Where you're free from sin and shame Where He heals your broken heart And speaks new life again Where His love is ever drawing To a place where you'll never be alone Alone! Take Him to the place Watch dead things live again Where one touch of His grace And it's all washed away He's calling out your name Doesn't matter where you've been Or whatever you have faced Don't be afraid Let Him heal your Give you a new start You'll find life brand new Yes, you will He will calm all fears Wipe away your tears Show you love so true Just 
just take you to the place Watch dead things live again Where one touch of His grace And it's all washed away He's calling out your name Doesn't matter where you've been Or whatever you have faced Don't be afraid Just take it to the place Just take him to the place Hallelujah may be seated. Aren't you glad somebody introduced you to Jesus, the place where there is healing? Well, on our original schedule, our good friend, Brother Tony, uh, was going to mount this pulpit today, Brother Tony Suarez, and uh, he is in a red-hot revival in Houston, Texas, that they wanted to extend for four more weeks. And people are being baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. He called me. He said, Pastor, I never cancel. I already knew what was coming when he said that. And uh, he said, we are in a red-hot revival. And I said, Brother Tony, think nothing else about it. You stay in that revival. But God was dealing with me on having someone anyway. Uh, and Brother Tony Suarez confirmed that. He said, well, he said, I feel in my heart... Brother Morton Bustard needs to fill the pulpit on that Sunday. And I said, you have confirmed what I feel, Brother Tony. Brother Morton and I, the past day, have spent some time with each other. Our faith has been encouraged with each other. I told him I didn't know what he was preaching today, but if he would just string together what we talked about yesterday, that would be fine. It was very encouraging. The Spirit of the Lord is already here today, and I'm going to ask you to open your heart and open your mind for what God wants to do personally in you today. Would you stand as I invite our evangelist today? And as you're standing, I want you to simply put your hand on your heart, and I want you to pray that your heart be opened. Would you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I open my heart and my mind to receiving the Word of God today. Your Spirit that will flow freely today through the man of God. I am attentive to his word, and my spirit and my faith will be elevated to receive what you have for me today. Father, I will be a listener, and I will be a worshiper, and I will not just be a hearer of your word, but I will be a doer. And I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Let everyone say amen. amen. Please welcome Evangelist Morton Buster from Canada. Thank you. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise this morning at Lighthouse because he is worthy. He's worthy of the highest praise. Come on, give it up a little bit more for him. Praise his holy name. The Lord is my strength and my power. He maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like the hinds feet. He sets me upon my high places. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 13. Verse 31, 32, and 33. Well, I've helped mentor Tony Suarez for 22 years, but this is a first. This is the first time that I am uh, stepping into a pulpit in his stead because he's someplace else. But anyhow, it's a privilege to be in Kingsport, Tennessee at Lighthouse. I already feel at home. It's going to be a great day. If you came in the north gate, you'll leave under the south gate. You'll leave a little bit different than the way you came. I have come to pump you up. This is God's gym. I have come to tell you what Fox News, CNBC, MSNBC, CNN is not going to tell you. You're on the winning side. If God before you, who can be against you? Praise the name of the Lord. My beautiful wife, Marilyn, sends her greetings. She and I have been married for quite a long time. She's the only girl I ever dated. She's my brown hair, brown eyed gal. When you found the best, you don't mess with the rest. As the late Venerable Paul Newman one time said, why go out for spam when you have filet mignon at home? 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have COVID-19. I am Bustard-19. I'm the youngest of 19 children. No twins or adoptions. Same parents, raised in a modest town in eastern Canada. I'm glad they didn't stop at 18. I hope Marilyn feels the same way, always. But if you, if you notice that I'm clearing my throat a little bit, don't worry. It's not, it's not the row. It's because we have a lot of atmosp atmospheric things happening in Louisiana, and especially with the recent hurricane, putting limbs all over my backyard, cleaning that up. So, but we're getting through it. So I just want to throw that out there to you. Luke chapter 13, verse 31. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Get out. Depart now, for Herod's going to kill you. And he said unto them, Go you and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow. And the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Lord Jesus, speak a word of encouragement. Let the next few minutes be heaven on earth. May signs, wonders, and miracles happen. May you invite me into a level of the prophetic that is rare, that is uncommon. People will leave saying, man cannot do these things except God be with him. Amen? Amen. Would you lay that Bible down and give him about a 30-second thunderous <laughs> round of applause? That sounds good. That sounds good. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. You may be seated. I'm an optimistic person, but I'm pragmatic. I'm a pragmatic prophet. I put these suit pants on one leg at a time. So here's how we operate. If Jesus gives a word, we'll speak it. If not, we won't make one up. If it's a miracle, let's shout. If not, let's not fake it. But most of all, Jesus is a gentleman, and he will not embarrass you. So from, since this is my maiden voyage to your wonderful assembly, I'll give you a little tip. You have to use what God gives you. So when I look at you with beady eyes, I probably am not seeing half the things you think I'm seeing, so don't sweat that stuff. It's like the lady who told Winston Churchill, you're drunk. And he said, yes, and you're ugly. But then he said, in the morning, I'll be sober. I have to use what God gave me. But anyhow, let's just, let's, let's get into it here a little bit. So, so having said all of that, man that is born of woman is a few days, and those days will have trouble and sorrow, the Bible says. So at some point, not so good news will come to your door. And thank you, sound engineers, for keeping these monitors hot and hopefully in the house. I intend to get loud. So I know this crowd, sound men if, and women perhaps, if this crowd gets loud, don't turn them down. You may have to turn me up, but don't turn them down. I, uh, I'm working with, with this whole thing going on with my vocal cords. So when, when that time comes, and it might be this season that we're in right now, in the world, right here in America, I want to just give you a few guidelines of how to deal with these type of situations. So certain of the Pharisees come to Jesus and they say, you, you better leave Dodge now. Because here's your option. Leave, live, stay, die, for Herod will kill you. So let's just unpack it. There were three Herods. Herod the first, he was the one who 
issued an edict for ethnic cleansing. And in order to fulfill his own edict, he had to have his own three sons birthed to him by his wife, Mary Ann, because she had a bit of a different ethnic background. He had to have his own sons killed. I think it's noteworthy that even though he could kill his own sons, when he issued the edict that baby boys would die at the birth of Jesus, he could not kill the son of the living God. Brothers and sisters, there are some things the enemy can do, but there's a lot more he cannot do. And he does not have permission to run roughshod over you, your home, your finances, your business, your children, and do whatever he says. He's a loser and a liar. He has a whole lot of bark but no bite because nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus detoothed him, dethroned him, detoured him, he doesn't even have the keys to his own front doors. And he's on his way down. But you're going up, 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 up. I am of the opinion that the chaos and confusion in the world mirrors what is happening in the spirit realm. I believe that all of this anger and so forth is the enemy filled with fear trying to project his fear on the population. But God has not given us the spirit of fear and in 2020, September the 6th, I choose to walk in power love and a sound mind for he has declared the end from the beginning and none of this snuck up on him and caught him unaware he's as much lord today as he was before covid 19 because he was god covid 1 through 18 and he's god during covid 19 and we need to get back to having healing services where people will want to come to church but maybe when the phds are through messing up and we and we're beginning to really question some of their numbers, maybe we'll stop listening to the PhD, come back and listen to the word of G-O-D, and have miracles in our church like we are supposed to have. You're in the right place at the right time. Something is about to happen through your body. It doesn't matter if it's stage four cancer. This is the day that God is going to demonstrate his power to you. I am feeling so much at home right now. Would you give him some more praise? Now, his son... The Herod that we're referring to in Luke 13, verse 31 through 33, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. His father was evil, but this Herod is evil personified. And so he lets this young lady dance, and when she does the dance, he falls into a trance and gets into a flesh-feeding frenzy. She not only thinks she could dance, that girl danced up a storm. Because that dude was so overcome with sensuality that he said, hey young lady, I'll give you half of my kingdom. Now that must have been some dance. That's, that's better than any TV show where you get up and dance and I'm not even going to attempt to do that, but anyhow. But she was dictated to by mama, and she did not ask for half of the kingdom. She said, I want the head of John the Baptist. And so, the first Herod killed his own three children. This Herod ordered the death of John the Baptist and presented his head on a platter for her and her mama. So the threat was eat what was real. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not ignoring reality. I don't know what all you are going through. God has not given me a word of knowledge to look at you and know instantly what you're going through in your own homes. But more than likely, there are people sitting on these benches today at Lighthouse that are facing real issues. 
And they could be threatening the finances. They could be threatening to your own health. But they may even be threatening to the future of your family. So I understand that it's real. But here's what I want to tell you. When the enemy comes in demanding something of you, bringing all type of anxiety and accusations, number one, consider the source. Would you say that? Consider the source. Consider the source. Now, in this case, it was certain Pharisees, but they were Pharisees who were certain that if Jesus didn't leave, he was going to die. I never took the Pharisees as people who were concerned about the future of Christ. As a matter of fact, they and their ilk helped get him crucified. There are some people that are envious of you. And it's because of the favor and the anointing of God that is upon you and that you walk in. And they want you out of the will of God. Because as long as you're around standing in faith, speaking faith, and so forth, it challenges their lack of faith and boldness. So they would just as soon you just sit down and be quiet. It really wouldn't bother them if you stopped coming to Lighthouse because you're so boisterous with your praise. I mean, you act like you don't have a problem in the world. The fact of the matter is, they know that what you're facing is 10 times worse than what they're facing, but you're praising God, they're having a pity party, and it really irks them when you're up there praising God and giving Him thanks in all things. Another little pointer. Never make a decision when you're motivated by fear. Don't let fear lead you. Let your spirit man lead you. COVID-19 is a crash course in learning how to be led by your fear or your faith. I choose to let my spirit man lead me because around mid-March when our governor said we're going to shelter in place and I had to stay at our house. I went into the prayer chamber and said, Lord, for more than 35 years, you have kept Marilyn and I on the evangelistic field. You have sent us around the world. This is not our first rodeo and you are our Jehovah Jireh. Now, if you want me to shut down, that's fine. But just because the governor is issuing a recommendation by the CDC doesn't mean that I have to sit down and shut up. I will find a way to prophesy. I will find an outlet and I know you're going to turn this for the good and I'm going to come out of this stronger and greater than before. You ought to see the new you. You ought to see the new you post-COVID-19. You ought to see the new lighthouse post-COVID-19 because COVID-19 has put grit in our gut, steel in our spine, and we're no longer going to have business as usual. We're no longer going to argue over little gripes and trivial matters here on the hill at Lighthouse. We are going to have a Holy Ghost revival and become a regional church in this whole entire region of Tennessee, just like the prophets of old who helped launch this church begin to prophesy they being dead yet speak the Lord wants me to tell you that you have a library of volumes of unfulfilled prophecy that he wants to bring the past beginning now would you shout unto him another pointer don't make quick decisions that could negatively affect your future. If you're not about to breathe your last breath, back away, wait for another day, wait until your emotions are no longer charged and you're not feeling that threat. And here's another one. Put things into perspective. So Jesus is saying, 
So y'all are telling me that if I don't get out of Dodge right now, I won't leave, live to see another day. It's over. So you want to call this place Waterloo. He said, you all have this wrong, you see. You're looking at Herod and his kingdom and his family and some evil things that he's done. And you're magnifying that. You're acting like that's the ultimate authority, but my kingdom is not of this world. All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Destroy this temple, but in three days, I'm going to raise it up. Now, you're telling me what I need to do. So I want you to become my scribes. I want to reverse the scenario. It's time for me, the son of the living God, God in flesh to do the talking. So listen up, boys. You go back and tell Herod what I'm saying. It's time for you to stand up and tell the devil, you don't dictate to me. My home is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. My wife and I entered a certain season of challenge, February of 2018, and I was leaving the end of March to go on my first revival flying out of town. And I said, now, Jesus, I know your angels have covered my house. As sure as I'm standing here, I saw a vision, an aerial view of my rooftop, and at each end was a huge angel, and they were leaning over, and their wings met. And when their wings met, there wasn't a single shingle on my rooftop exposed. I said, thank you for covering the home, Jesus. Are you ready? Because we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes. He said, you go back and tell Herod that old fox. You don't set my agenda. You don't tell me what to do. And if you say jump, I'm not going to do it. You ought to stand up out of that seat at Lighthouse today and just mouth the words if you want. But you ought to undo that seatbelt and get to your feet if you feel like it. If you're sick and tired of the devil telling you what to do, you ought to get up and tell him what to do. You ought to tell him where to go. You ought to tell him where to get off. Because you don't have to take that oppression. You don't have to listen to that litany of lies. You ought to stand up and say, you old fox, you lying devil, you're not going to tell me what to do because Jesus said, here's how it's going to happen. I'm not going to run for my life. Instead, I'm going to cast out devils and I'm going to heal the sick today. So why don't you raise your hands and say, devil, not today. Say it like you really want him to hear you. Devil, not today. Instead, today there's going to be signs, wonders, and miracles. People are going to be delivered from demons and healed disease today. I have come to Lighthouse to declare today is a day of the supernatural. Ladies and gentlemen, if all you do is ingest the news, you're not going to walk in faith because one day they're going to say at the first week of November, there's going to be a viable vaccine. And the next day, Dr. Fauci is going to say, uh, you might not want to put that on your calendar. And then the stock market goes way down because the PhD spoke again. You can't do that. You have to realize, I know there's a lot of evil in the world, but if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, God lives in you. Demons tremble at the sound of the name of Jesus. One can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand. And what you need to realize, whether you're on the job, in your home, at school, in the car, you are surrounded with an innumerable host of angels. He's got you covered. Don't just prophesy today, prophesy your future. 
You don't need to bring a hotshot evangelist in who operates in the prophetic from Canada who now bases out of Alexander, Louisiana. You don't need to do that. You need to learn to prophesy your own future. He said, today I'm going to cast out devils and heal the sick, and I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow. So I'm going to tell you boys what's going to happen today and tomorrow. We're going to have revival in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, the church is not on the sidelines or shuttered. We're on the front lines and we're going to make hell shudder. By the time this is over with, he's going to wish he never would have propagated the stupid virus because it's not as vile and as they're saying. It's a, it may have been discovered by scientists in Wuhan, China in, in January, but make no mistake whether it was a wet market or in a lab, it really originated in hell and we need to send it back to the pits. Of, have we forgotten? Have we forgotten that we're in a spiritual war? Don't you understand right now, America is at the greatest crossroads, probably greater than any other time in our 245 years, probably more critical than when Washington with his ragtag army crossed the Delaware and on Christmas Eve, they knelt in the snow and pray and God sent the fog. Ladies and gentlemen, if we will stay true to God's word and remain the friend of Israel, God said, if needs be, I will come down and fight along your side. And then he said the third day, I shall be perfected. Don't you ever forget we're the third day church. We don't leave him in a tomb. We don't leave him hanging on a cross. He's no longer where he laid. He's the risen Christ. And if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, it shall quicken your mortal bodies. You have resurrection power in you. Now, I've asked Pastor McMillan, go ahead, I said, and do the webcast, but please don't archive this. And if you're viewing this at home, please do not memorialize this by recording it because I'm going to share some testimonies. About an hour and 20 minutes from my house in Alexandria, Louisiana, a minister friend of mine who's mid-60s, and please, please don't memorialize this because I don't want to upset him. He would laugh, but then again, I don't want to invade his privacy, but this man could easily stand to lose 125 pounds, easily. This man has, I think, 14 stents. He has a defibrillator slash pacemaker in his chest. He has three wires inside, two wires outside. He has had massive heart attacks. And then he contracted COVID-19. And I called him and began to give him the word of the Lord. And he was upbeat. He was positive. And through his ordeal with COVID-19, I would text him. And then a few weeks ago, after he had come out of it for about three weeks and survived, I said, Ronnie, you're a two or three weeks on the other side of this. He said, yes. I said, well, you're not exactly the poster boy for health. And he shared with me what I just shared with you about his health. He said, but Brother Buster, when I would have massive heart attacks, my family would say, you stay in that easy chair and don't you get out. He said, no. No, I'm going to preach and I'm gonna hunt and I'm gonna fish because if I die doing any of those three, I'll die with a big smile on my face. He said, I made up my mind, COVID-19 is not taking me out. I have a future. We're the church of the third day. We have a future. God's not through with the United States of America. I feel that we're on the brink of a great breakthrough. I believe that will blow your mind what God is about to do and we might look back and laugh at 2020 instead of crying like we're doing right now. And then finally, here's the kicker. Why was Jesus so confident? It's very simple. It's all the way down here in the end of verse 33. He said, for it cannot be that a prophet perish outside of Jerusalem. 
I get my keyboardist back up here with me? Thank you so much. He said, it cannot be that a prophet die out of Jerusalem. The scripture says that the prophet will die in Jerusalem. He's not in Jerusalem. What he's saying is, and my keyboardist is on the way, what he, what he is saying is, everything I'm believing is based on the word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will last forever. If God has already spoken a word about your future, you hold on to it. If he's given you a promise about your family, you hold on to it. Give him a big hand clap in the house. Give him a big hand clap. Matter of fact, why don't you stand all over the house this morning? Hallelujah. officially cancer free. Several years ago when Tony Suarez was just probably in his early to mid 20s, he brought me into Chicago to do some type of a youth crusade and not a lot of youth showed up age showed up and we packed the place out and a young lady from his father's church in the Chicago area came to the crusade and she had full blown AIDS HIV positive in that crusade she was completely healed of AIDS Believe he's believing God this time next year to be around four or four point five. 
five million. So whatever God has planned for future construction of this assembly, God's already got it taken care of. of the greatest miracles would never have happened after that moment. Don't give in to the doubt of this season and the fear because your best days are in front of you. Your greatest anointing is in front of you. and today and forever. He says, Sunday morning is your day. So woman, from the top of your head through your body, all through the core of your body, I speak healing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus. There it goes right now. Rabah Hashaka Tarabah. the rest well let's just check let's just check out here sis I believe that God heard our prayer you before you raised your hands before we prayed were you in any type of pain aching discomfort of any kind take a deep breath in let it out how's it feeling is there any pain or discomfort deep breath. Now exhale. Is it still feeling better? Then the rest of you with any type of a similar condition in your body, raise your hands up by the authority of the name of Jesus and the finished work of Calvary. By his stripes you were healed. I command it out of your body right now. Not the slightest symptom remaining in the name of Jesus be loose. I would prefer not everybody look back because I don't want to attract undue attention to people. But the gentleman at the back, it looks like you have a mauve or a light purplish t-shirt on you right there. Would you raise your hands back up? Can I keep praying for you? 
we're gonna we're gonna cut what feels to be a band around your chest it infers stress my brother you're about to enter a stress-free zone so it is undone right now now the next thing is even though you appear to be much younger than me and that's probably the case you have sleep interruptions that cause rest deprivation but it leaves you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth by the power of the living God it's over it's done with developing neuropathy those lower limbs in the area of the feet he's also not only a great in, internist he's a great podiatrist raise your hands up your feet are about to be healed right now in the name of Jesus it's on you right now lady right now there it goes in Jesus name ladies it leaves you right now it leaves you right now in the name of Jesus. I know the rest of you, I gotta come to you. Sis, right here. Would you look at me? Would you raise your hands up? If you can just look at me, I know I can't really see it, but can I keep talking to you? Chronic fatigue out of your body. There it goes. Okay, you, it's on and off, off and on, but there's a little situation with UTI, but that is coming out of the tract. There you go, there it goes. The UTI has left the air right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Let there be light. That's the power of God. There goes your healing. Now, now, sis, I would never, ever intentionally make you uncomfortable in a million years, but can I just continue? Is it all right? There's two more things I want to get to. If you don't mind looking at me. Now, your side is different than mine, so when I lay my hand on a side, it might be because I'm not right beside you, but it's diagonal, it's very short. be going back 15 years I don't know but have, in this lower area have you had any type of a surgery raise your hands up take your hand put it on your right side right here pull it away raise it back up you will not need it because that little stabbing painful thing that comes and goes comes and goes the enemy wants you to be concerned about it he's a loser he's a liar now the final thing is your thyroid was just tuned tick tock like a clock in the name of Jesus you are completely balanced within and without and know this know that God is moving on your home in your home he's going to supply every need you and I speak to the rest of the homes I'm speaking to all of your homes vicariously through her your homes are going to experience an ascension with the uh, orange pull up on lady right there there's a little person right in front of you would you raise your hands up I have no clue why I'm supposed to say this to you but 
the Lord is wanting me to tell you as Jesus spoke about his own future, speak about your own future because there has been a hiatus, a pause, not a breakage, but there's been a little time out. You're going to return. You're going to excel. You're going to finish what you started in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then finally, fear is not going to dominate you. Faith is going to dominate you. I tell you right now in the name of Jesus, in spite of present circumstances, things are going to come together in the name of Jesus. take advantage of your time, but can I have about five more minutes? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? I want everybody with spinal conditions that will involve things like degenerate bone disease, disc invertebrates that are just kind of, that are just kind of wearing out. Raise your hands up. You're about to get you. That's why I can down here, sis. Can I keep talking to you? Would you raise your hands up? And I also want you to know that if you prefer that I social distance, that won't offend me at all. Matter of fact, I take precautions, and here's why. I don't fear COVID. I respect it. Number two, we just have a week and a half old grandson, and I don't want to do something stupid. So my, my daughter says, well, Dad, you can't come around for 14 more days because i got to see that little fellow. So therefore, Then you're right. Yes. Jesus is going to touch you. If you're real close to me and nicotine is still trying to hold on to you and you don't want any type of nicotine to hold you back, wave your hand. Wave it. Raise your hands up. If you think I can smell that on him, get over there. Say, Jesus, I am free of this. Cleanse me. Out of him right now in the name of Jesus. I command the habit out of you from this moment in the name of Jesus. You don't need it. So you don't mind if I keep talking to you. It's good. I only say that because I want you to know that the Holy Ghost will never impose His will over you. And the reason why the gift is flowing is because you're, you're bringing it out of me. You're, you're, re, you're as responsible as as I am. Up in the area of the adenoids, the mandible, which is the lower jawline right here, and headaches and so forth. Are you ready for God to touch you? There it goes right now in the name of Jesus. It's gone. Think of your past from neck to tailbone and every point in between right now in the name of Jesus be loosed would you raise your hands up would you stay there for one second I may be a thousand miles off but the Lord just spoke to me the portion of scripture comfort them in Zion comfort them that mourn comfort comfort the binding of the broken hearted there's a heavy spirit over your mama and we're probably going back years but God wants you to know that he still has a change of clothing for you he's going to give you beauty for ashes I know it. time has gone by and you haven't seen the beauty yet but God wants me to tell you he's going to give you beauty for ashes and the garments of praise so at some point there's going to be shouting at some point this is going to lift in the name of Jesus if I keep talking to you I'm going to be diplomatic but you will understand because they don't need to understand it's just you upper body to the sides there are certain spots they'll get you wondering hope everything's alright because of little system modules or is there one there now this morning you found it that's why I have to be very guarded when I talk because I can't have anything that impedes this. I live this. And you, you get to do this by fellowship with Christ, by being in prayer with Him, 
shutting the world out. Which side is it on? Say goodbye. goodbye. Good riddance. Good and don't ever come back again. Because in the wee hours of the morning, before the sun ever arose, I was laying at the hotel, waiting upon God, waiting upon God, and I begin to see this happening. It's time for this thing to come out of your body right now on the left-hand side, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Now I can go to you, but I can go to you, but if you would like to get the little deviation out of your spine, because you have a little bit of a bend, it's 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 kind of a little bit of a scoliosis thing. It's not anything real in that's crucial, but if you'd rather have that spine straight than a little bend in the spine, raise your hand up. Boy, he's touching this family today. Raise your hands up. That quick it's gone in Jesus' name. Now, before I prayed for you, you said your back had some discomfort. Anybody else that's in pain right now, if you can do it, would you just move from your seat into a, an aisle that's nearest to you? Everybody that has physical pain in your body right now, just would you just move? Would you just move? This is so effortless this morning. There is no effort on my part. The greatest miracles of healing I've ever witnessed are when I least expected it. Because it was so effortless. Would everybody pray? The nodule that she discovered this morning is gone. We just sent her to the ladies' restroom. And now, if she wants to go and see her doctor, the Bible says, prove all things. I'm all for seeing the doctor. Prove all things. Everybody that has physical pain presently in your body, just move to the Nile that's closest to you and raise your hands up. Here it comes. Woman right over here, it's touching you right now. Over here in the name of Jesus Christ, be loosed by the power of the living God right now in Jesus' name. Are you wanting healing too? You did. Raise your hands up. Raise your hands up. Your knees aren't going to, no, but I raise, you get your hands up because it's going to hit you quick if you don't get your hands up. 
Be loosed in your knees, mama, right now in Jesus' name. Right here, right back here. Be loosed in the name of Jesus Christ. And that be loosed. Be loosed. Of the, the living God. You don't mind if I keep talking to you? It's not a big deal, but would you raise your hands up? Right down that lower part of the back. Father, just tune it up right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Just give it a touch right here, right now. Be loosed down every aisle. Whether it's a cataract, a sty, something to do with retina being pulled, or even glaucoma, eye, optic, eye related, raise your hands up. He's touching you right now. In Jesus' name. say unto you that although at times the flame flickered it never extinguished but I am going to send the wind of my Holy Spirit upon this place and embers are going to emerge and there will be a flame that will come forth and there will be people that will come with candles and they will light their wick and take it with them and people will come and receive and leave come receive and leave in the name of Jesus and I will tell you this ladies and gentlemen that God is going to cross denominational lines what he's about to do one building cannot accommodate one group cannot accommodate he has already stepped out of the box of denomination and organization and he says I stand at the door and knock and if anyone opens that door I will come in so I prophesy an awakening in America in the name of Jesus I prophesy in the Kingsport area all through these hills and dales and vales and glens in the name of Jesus let the hills ring with the praises of God please keep standing for just one more moment don't be shy if you're in need of a financial miracle don't be shy raise your hands to the heavens In the name of Jesus, I speak provision to you and your family in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask for supernatural blessings to flow into this church. As a matter of fact, the Garden of God, Eden, had four rivers. The Hittakel, Pies, and Geisen, and the Euphrates that flowed through it to irrigate. Even though it was the dew and it had not rained, they were still for irrigation purposes. Father, I pray for rivers of revenue to flow through this church to irrigate that which has been planted so this church can minister in a dimension that they've only dreamed of because God has sent Pastor Alan McMillan to bring that vision to pass for it to crystallize and materialize during his pastorate here in the name of Jesus. And God's going to bless in areas of finances that are going to shatter records in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak to it right now. You ought to shout. You ought to praise him all over the house. Would you lift your voice and praise him all over the house? Now, Father, we give you praise for what you did today because no man did this. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And this church will remain focused and unified like never before for revival in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give him one more hand clap? So, while you're standing, 
thank you, worship team. The worship was amazing. When I got here at 1015, and I went into Bishop's office, and I, and I, I, I greet the bishop today who's not with us. I greet, oh, Bishop Peters, goodness sakes alive. I've never met, I've never met you before, fist bump. Bishop Peters, get over here, let's give a big hug, come on. No, I'm joking. I do this here, I do this here. That's one of my corny jokes. I got a new grandson and I'm being very careful. That's, it, 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 here's the deal, I'm still flying and all of that. I don't fear this crazy thing, but I respect you. You that have face masks on, you're not marginalized or ostracized. That's your decision because we know nothing about your immune system. We know nothing about who you're trying to protect. So here's my schedule. I will leave and Pastor and I will get a quick bite. I will pack, go back to the airport this afternoon, fly home tonight, and then tomorrow I will help do a funeral back in Louisiana. Uh, a wonderful lady, our executive pastor at the POA, Pentecost of Alexander, Gary and Maxwell, his sweet mom has gone on to be with the Lord, so I'm going to participate. So this is how I operate. Your pastor and you wonderful people, you flew me in, you put me in a very clean and comfortable hotel. You took care of airfare, and since it was such short notice, and Delta Airlines is at 50% capacity because they're spacing everybody out, and since they have limited service, especially in a small town like Alexandria and a small airport like Tri-Cities, airfares really go up. He very graciously is taking care of that. There's no charge. If anybody says, what what do you normally get? I said, whatever God says. That's what I do. So without any pressure, we do this at the end, at the end of praying for the sick because you don't buy a miracle. And if I embarrassed your pastor in this offering, I would embarrass you. I'm very aware of that because I used to pastor. But the reason why for 36 plus years I'm still in the field is because you can't be honest and more honest. And the... the, the there's an old saying, there's no pillow as soft as a clear conscience. So this is how we do it. If you were blessed and you truly believe in the principle of sowing and God growing, but let him choose how he's going to bless you. Please don't turn this into a Vegas casino deal where you give $10 and you get $100 in return. He might bless you far beyond money. Amen. This is what I'm, I ask you to do. Just like I tune into the word of knowledge, I ask you to raise your hands to heaven. Would you do that? Forget about everybody around you and forget about fear of finances and just simply say, Lord Jesus. Say, say Lord Jesus. Challenge my faith to sow my best seed. And what you say, I will obey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will start at 100 go down to $5 or $1. And if God says more than 100 that's between you and him, but with your hands raised, keep listening. Keep your hands raised, keep listening, because He's going to. I'm going to ask him to speak to you. There's no coercion. Please, there's no coercion. And I'm going to tell you, I've enjoyed myself so much today. If the offering is a matter of a couple hundred dollars, I would be honored to get to come back. I will tell you in advance. I will tell you in advance. Because it's not about that. It's about you getting blessed. Because I practice this myself. So, Father, as their hands are raised, I ask you to speak it. Let them hear it, know it, feel it. Just let them be inspired how they should give. Because what you're going to give back exceeds anything we can give to you. So, Father, they've got the faith to sow it. You have the resources to grow it. Let it happen right now in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you feel that God is leading you? Pastor Allen is about to receive it by while you're standing. It's time now for me to take less than a minute and receive the offering. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. If God has instructed you to give around that $100 level, raise your hands up. 50, 20, 10, 5, or $1. Get your hands up. That's the offering. That's the offering. That's, that's how we do it. Now, if you're going through a hard time financially and you don't have money to give, don't be embarrassed. Raise your hands up. One person, a couple, say, say I, I give you water, Brother Buster. 
In Jesus' name, I receive the water, and the water is about to enter the ministry. He said he'll bless you for doing that. Now, please don't write out any checks to me. Write them out the lighthouse. You can give by cash, check, electronically, probably. You're probably all set up for that. But even though you have not prepared your offering, would you just pretend it's in your hand and raise your hand and declare this to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I saw you grow. In Jesus' name, the harvest will come. Now, may the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you in Jesus' name. Give him a big hand clap. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how we do it across the board where we go. Pastor's going to receive it. It's been my honor to be here. Would you welcome him? Hallelujah. Now? Would you give Brother Buster a hand in the Lord? Thank you, Brother Buster. I'm going to ask our ushers to come, if they would, please. Ushers, come with the pans. We're going to let you march. Please put the text to give. I know we live in a cashless society. We're sowing seeds. Please put the text to give on the screen. If you're not prepared via cash, via check, text it to the number that's going to go on the screen. And there it is. Text any amount to 84321. Or you can visit lighthousekpt.com. Give. Uh, put it. Just simply put it in the, in the general offering. We will see that. It will register pretty immediately. We want to sow into good ground. Evangelist Bustard and his ministry is good ground. Father, bless every saint of God as they give. By the powerful name of Jesus, amen. You can't leave until you've given something. No, I'm just kidding. God bless you. March, bring that offering and you're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you.